Happy New Year, and welcome to the bright new normal. I don't know about you, how do you feel about letting go of 2020 and moving into 2021? Maybe something like this? Yeah, me too. As the old saying goes, a picture is worth a thousand words. 2020 was an unprecedented year. How many times did you hear newscasters say that. I felt like I was hearing it all the time. An unprecedented amount of times newscasters were talking about the unprecedented events of the day over and over again. And so some of these unprecedented events we'd love to leave behind. And some of them, like unprecedented voter turnout, is a keeper. So some things are worth carrying over and that's a little bit of what we're going to look at today. This year is not like any old new year. I mean, it is in the sense that there's hope and expectancy and goals and resolutions and visions like there is at every turn of the year. But different than that, there is an opportunity for us, a really rich opportunity to establish a new normal, a new way of being with ourselves and one another because we're still in this pandemic. We're still in some of these changes, but there's more light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. 2021 is going to be an unprecedented year in the sense that we get to set the precedence of what it is that we want our lives to look like and feel like and what we want our world to be. That's a pretty uh, rare and wonderful opportunity. I mean, we have it every day and every moment as we know in our spiritual walk. But when there is this kind of collective energy and these kinds of collective unprecedented <laughs> events, there's, a, there's something else coming. There's a bigger emergence that is available to us and an energy that is available to us. So let's ride on those coattails, those parts of 2020 that give us that kind of boost. So much has changed in the last nine months of our lives, if you think about it. The way that we commute, the way that we hold meetings, attend classes, the way that we connect with each other, converse with each other, share food, play games, everything has changed. And all that time that we used to spend commuting and traveling, well, it's freed up a little more time for us, hasn't it? Maybe to be more creative, to connect in a new way, to connect with the within. And who knew we could do so many different things with a device and still remain connected? That has been a wonder to me. And, and how really smoothly at Unity of Walnut Creek and organizations and, and ministries all over the world, we've made the switch. I mean, I'm not saying there hasn't been a lot of work behind the scenes. I'm looking at our production team right now, and there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of work behind the scenes by staff and others to make that happen. But for the most part, it has been fairly seamless. The possibilities are expanded for us vastly because we have adapted to new things. And I think in some ways we've been surprised. I know I have to learn new ways of being and to find out it actually works. It actually works to do more things online. In fact, some of these things we'll still do online because they're even more effective. And as we've learned to do new things, we've realized we can serve more people more of the time. So it expands our audience in whatever we're doing. And especially here at Unity of Walnut Creek is the lens I'm thinking of with that. We've bridged that generational tech divide at least a little bit. And that is a big win-win for everyone, allowing us to really be more on the same page with how we can connect with one another. If unprecedented is the word for 2020, do you know what the phrase is? You're muted. How many times have you heard that? <laughs> and, and of course, why do we say that? Because we care about hearing what every person has to say, because we deeply care about connection. 
We, it, if anything, what all of this has made abundantly clear is that as great as technology is, human beings are wired for physical connection. So that's, of course, a piece in all of this as well. And you know we will return to being together. I'm claiming it in 2021 sooner rather than later. Remember in the early days of stay at home, all the things that happened, like the traffic, there was none. It was so quiet. I often do the noon meditation from my backyard. And I remember those, that first month or six weeks or so, all you could hear was songbirds. It was so lovely. And then as things started opening up, you could hear a little more traffic and then a little more traffic. Now I have to push the mute button when the motorcycles and the trucks go by. But that time was really precious, wasn't it? And we carry that with us. We carry all of this, all this change actually in our DNA now because we've lived it, we've felt it, we've experienced it. It's in, literally incorporated, incorporated into the body, into our cells. And so there's other things that happen too. Remember reports came in from all over the world. You know, all of a sudden people in all kinds of towns around China could hear birds for the first time or, or people reported that the air was so clear that they could see mountain ranges that folks hadn't seen for decades. The water was so clear that people couldn't even remember ever seeing that. It was so many generations back. Those were pretty special times. You know, the times when the um, Italians were singing to one another from balcony to balcony. Remember that serenade? Charlie's behind the camera today, very Italian, and he's smiling at me. <laughs> and, and that also that in New York, when people would come out and they would clap at a certain time for the frontline workers, that was so inspiring and heartwarming and uniting for all of us. There was also this, this sense of, of being connected more with nature itself. So more connected to each other and more connected to nature, that's what we carry with us forward. We can uphold the best of us in the toughest of times. We know that now. Maybe we knew it before, but it seems like we know it maybe in a whole new way because it's fresher, it's newer. There's a newfound soul resistance, humor, compassion, understanding that has developed during these times. And that's something new that has developed. We're just simply not going back. Charles Eisenstein puts it this way. We sense that normal isn't coming back, that we are being born into a new normal, a new kind of society, a new relationship with the earth, a new experience of being human. The new year offers us the ability to recreate our cultural norms. That's what a new normal is, right? How we move about the world, how we relate to one another, how we do things, how we do business, how we do life, how we, you know, all of it is, is up for grabs in a sense to say, maybe we don't want to do it that way anymore. Maybe we could do it this way, or maybe we could blend those two. There's a lot of that possibility happening as well. So asking ourselves how we want to show up in all of this is a big key to this, isn't it? We stand on more solid ground than we did nine months ago. We have more information. We don't necessarily have certainty, but we have more information. So that gives us a little bit more of a solid feeling. And one of the spiritual lessons, maybe the biggest one of all, is that uncertainty, it's just a part of life. To just accept that, to allow that to be, opens up all kinds of possibilities for us. I remember once I said to a mentor, I just want to release my doubt. And she said, I wouldn't trust anybody who didn't have doubts. And that, just, uh, that truth just immediately dawned on me, and I realized I wouldn't either. And it just opened up a whole new door from that time on that I realized you know, having doubts and allowing them when they come up for me, when I feel uncertain or unsure, I open that door further and it has opened the door further then to my faith. My doubts have actually enhanced my faith. That personal door of making space for self-doubt opens us up to the whole package of divinity, essentially, to dance in the mystery of spirit a little more. 
I think a lot of us leaned on our faith more in 2020 because of all the uncertainty. Maybe you did too. And as we do that, we trust, we learn to trust that there is a bigger picture unfolding. We get it that we can't see it all. And when we just allow ourselves to be okay with it, because what's the alternative, right? To keep fighting against it, to keep resisting and pushing up against it and to be basically miserable. So instead, we just breathe and ground and realize, hey, it's all going to be what it's going to be. And it's going to unfold in a greater sense of divine order. There's something bigger happening here. That's one thing that we've known and we've, I've spoken about several times throughout the last nine months. And I think a lot of us have realized in our own spiritual walks that there is just a bigger picture here and we can't see the whole thing. And it's okay that we can't. So instead of grasping for false security or kind of trying to control things or create that kind of um, sense of false security, we've made the shift. Instead of saying, good God, what now? I mean, did you say that throughout 2020? I know I heard it in my house a lot, <laughs> or I said it myself. But we move from good God, what now? to good God knows how. And when we feel into that, everything just sort of gets settled and allows us to be in our hearts and be in our bodies and be with what is in our lives. And when we do that, we free up mental space. And when we free up that mental space, it gives us more space to connect with the divine and to move through life in partnership with that divine energy. In the past year of your life, have you learned to live it and hold it with a more open hand, to just allow it to be as it is? Or have you allowed things to unfold with a greater sense of curiosity? Have you brought a spiritual presence to the conditions of life, to the people around you, helping bring greater calm to the chaos? If these sound like good things, you don't feel like you've really done them, you can start any time. It's true, we have more information now about COVID. White people know a whole lot more about racial inequality and police brutality. And we've been, become more informed about pretty much everything, poverty and politics, government and worldly power, corruption. We've had to withstand a ton of lies and a bunch of crazy conspiracy theories that continue. But because of them, the truth has been laid bare. And that truth allows us to be wiser for it. All of this has resulted more in us knowing ourselves better, and our perspectives, our fears, and our dreams. We the people can indeed form a more perfect union now because we have a greater sense of compassion and understanding and clarity than we did maybe yesterday certainly maybe over many months. The light that beams through the doorway now is like the light that keeps increasing since the winter solstice. You know, my mom lives outside of Chicago and she has, um, she's lived alone for a long time, but during this time, she's been more alone than ever. Times when my family, the rest of my family has been quarantining and so on. So she's felt much more isolated. And so as a result, we've been talking on the phone a lot more frequently. So I called her up on December 21st and I said, happy winter solstice. And my mom said, happy what? And I said, winter solstice, mom. It's the first day of winter. We're going to keep getting more light from this day forward. She said, oh, but it doesn't increase very much. Can't really even notice it. And I said, yeah, but it all adds up. And she said, oh, okay, yeah, that's good news. Happy winter solstice then. But it's like that, that it, the light just keeps increasing for us. And as it does, we inch a little closer to the desires of our hearts, like coming together in person. And we can just know that in the meantime, what is here for us in the here and now, to, be, to hold on to that, to allow ourselves to ask ourselves, who do I want to be when I get there? Who do I want to be when I rejoin with my people? What greater new gifts do I want to bring to be carrying with me because of the inner work that I've done during this time that was offered to me? What is your vision of a bright new normal? 
What, who will you be? Will you be a bridge builder? Will you be a joy bringer? These things are needed. Peacemakers? All of these are occupations we will need greatly in the bright new normal. And by occupations, I just mean what we choose to occupy our time and our talents and our actions in the world. And what is your new normal, your sense of what everyday life will be like in the new normal? This is a time to cast those visions, to open to the deeper desires of our hearts, to really ask, who do I want to be and how do I want to show up and what do I imagine my everyday life and the world to look like? What will be the bigger scene that I live into? Will I have big projects and new people, exciting things in my life, relationships, ways of building and collaborating that I maybe never saw before, but I can maybe feel a little bit of that energy that's breaking through. It's like the egg that hasn't quite hatched yet. You know there's some pecking going on in there. You know there's a little bit sense of some movement that's happening, some great new rebirth that is going on. And is it, if there is a deeper trust in our hearts and guts, can we commit to, to owning that and to trusting that and to following that? Because that will lead us to great things, to apply that wherever we go and whatever we do. Our innate knowing is really best said as a blend of a kind of sage and a child. When I was about six years old, I'd frequently go over to my next door neighbor, Mr. Wilson's house. And we would just talk for a long period of time. I mean, much to my parents' chagrin, I pretty much told him everything. And we'd just sit there and we'd sip lemonade and we'd eat cookies and we'd chat. And I just loved his sort of grandfatherly like presence. And he seemed to delight in my stories and my questions and that sort of childlike innocence, that curiosity that children bring. And so it was with this kind of way of being that, that maybe, well, maybe we all have opened a little bit more to these kinds of connections, giving ourselves a little more time and space for those kinds of conversations. I know I've met a ton more people at the park since we've been physically distanced with masks on than I did before. It's just a curiosity about connecting with neighbors and people in the area that I didn't have as much before. And so we might find those kinds of shifts that have happened for us. But this, this imagery of the grandchild and the grandparent is always a really special relationship. I know a lot of you know that firsthand from your experience with your own grandchildren. And if you think about it as the relationship that happens inside of us, that the, the grandparent or the sage inside of us and the child, the open, curious one inside of us meets and this is a great opportunity for us to carry this kind of wholeness, to, to be aware of it. That as a child, the way we experience the world wide-eyed and curious and questioning and full of wonder and awe, and yet as an older person or a, a wise and sage, you know, we've weathered some stuff, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, it's, it's that blend. It will be a refreshing new normal, I think, for us all to live into. So as we let go of 2020, which we did at the burning bowl, there's still, as I mentioned, some takeaways, some things that we may want to still carry with us. Here's a few things that we had a taste of in 2020 that I think are worthy of our consideration to keep carrying into 2021. There's a greater life work rhythm that has been established for many, and it opens up more creativity, more fulfillment, and better health for many. We've tried new things just for the fun of it, or because we really felt like we needed to, but it then became fun. We've respected or learned to respect more science and true expertise, all the while going to that head expertise, that place inside of us to consult where we find that big T truth. And so to know that truth, not get caught up in the falsehoods, not repeat all the falsehoods that are all around us out of fear. All the way back in 1850, Alfred Lord Tennyson said this, ring out wild bells to the wild sky, ring out the old and ring in the new, ring out the false, and ring in the true. 
Through 2020, we've enhanced our ability to do so many things. For example, to be less fearful of the other. We've enhanced our ability to see skin color and acknowledge the pain of racial inequality and brutality of people with black and brown bodies that they have withstained for so many years. And to commit to righting our minds and, and healing our wrongs around us. We've cared for, for the being, the well-being of, of everybody on the planet, of other human beings, of all life, of the earth, of ourselves, and take, taken caring actions to demonstrate that. We valued connection, and we still do. We realize that both and is more powerful than either or and more effective. Things like technology and being in person connection it's a both and, right? Medicine and holistic approaches, a both and. Faith and science, they're great companions. They're better together. Black, brown, and white, all human. <laughs> Red and blue, each has a perspective to bring. We are the sum of our parts. And that makes us more powerful, more whole, more true, more of our divine selves. We've learned to be net less naive while still remaining open, which makes us, in essence, wiser. We've embraced the spiritual mystery of not knowing. We've cast out fear and been guided more by love. And we've learned to trust the divine within us more, to listen to our bodies, to listen to our hearts, to listen to our intuition, to that innate knowing. So who are you now? And what will you carry into 2021? What's worthy for you to pull from or to call from within that you have learned or realized that you want to carry with you in your bag of gifts into 2021? Let's find out now as we move into our white stone ceremony to hone it down to that one guiding word or name or quality I'm going to give you a little intro before we move into the ceremony and the guidance. And just to remind you, if you um, had a, have a, the ritual kit, you have a white stone. It looks, uh, I have one in my pocket here. If I can get to it. Here we go. The ones in the, in the ritual kit look like this. But you can choose any stone around your house, outside. Um, it's, it's, there's no magic to having this particular kind of stone except that Felicia put a lot of love and care into this and in packaging those ritual kits, which we give thanks for. So that does make them magical. So you know, the white stone ceremony has a long history. So long, in fact, it goes all the way back to Jesus' time. In Jesus' time, when Roman prisoners were freed, they were given a white stone to represent that they had been freed from bondage. And a couple of days ago, we did our burning bowl ceremony that allowed us to free ourselves from the bondage of things like old beliefs that were weighing us down, things like, I'm not worthy, or I don't, I'll never have enough, and, and to free ourselves up from behaviors and patterns and things that were, were holding us back. So now we get the white stone. It's like a, it's a symbol of that freedom, that lightness of being. It's also a symbol of our new normal. It's a symbol of what we will create together. It's, it's a blank page, essentially, for us to let spirit bring forth that quality or name on for us. So the, the scripture that this is all based on, too, it has a, a scriptural base, is from Revelation 2.17. And it goes like this. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, in other words, overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. And I will give a white stone. And on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. We are overcoming our challenges by carrying the blessings and the lessons and the wisdom that we have gained thus far. And in return, spirit gives us the hidden manna, that secret hidden spiritual food that sustains us through the days to come and sustains us on our journey of realizing that which we are called to be. 
on this white stone, this new unprecedented new normal that we are creating that is full of promise, we'll write our intention or spiritual quality, our new name, our word that is our North Star for the year. So I want to invite you to listen, to drop all pre preconceived notions that you might have come with. Many of us come to these rituals already and we've thought about it, but our minds are wonderful and sometimes limit the power of what spirit can bring forth to us when we just get out of the way. And so that's what I want to encourage us to do. So we have a deeper knowing of ourselves and to call forth that aspect of self in the silence by listening. And then let's trust. Some kind of delightful surprise awaits us. I will give you, God promises, a white stone. And on this white stone is written a new name, the one, one that is only known by the one who receives it. So I invite you now to relax into the presence, to breathe for a moment, to allow yourself to become still. To let go and to let God and to let the words of this song carry you a little further into that presence within your heart. Today as I stand open to divinity in me, I hear my name, I hear my name, a name chosen by spirit and then whispered to my heart from this day. stone that means both purity and truth inner wisdom silent strength my name expresses god in me on this white stone on this white stone invite you now to hold your stone, maybe with your eyes closed, and let the word really seep in or be called forth onto the stone. Let the word come to you. You are this word. You bring it forth now into the light of day to be revealed. Allow it to emerge, the spiritual quality that will be your North Star throughout 2021. Let the stone arise in your mind's eye. And when you're ready, write it on your stone. A name chosen by spirit And then whispered to my heart From this day I am awakened Expresses God in me on this white stone, on this white stone I write my name on this white stone.
And so remember to keep this word sacred. And that might be, like the scripture says, between you and your God. And it may be that you feel guided to share it with certain people. But know that it is sacred right now to receive this word, to let it be your talisman throughout the year. And to that end, to allow it to be something that guides you through the year. So let's say your word was understanding. Maybe some questions that will come to you throughout the year is, you know, is, is this a moment for me to listen and to learn, to deepen my understanding? How often we can ask ourselves that, probably not too, off, not too many times. Or if your word is, say, uh, truth, then, you know, what is the truth that is wanting to be revealed right now through me and as me, to me? So whatever your word is um, and your, uh, that is on your rock, you want to keep it visible, the rock itself for, your, for you, so that you can see throughout the year. Maybe you keep it in your car or on your altar or somewhere where you frequently see it to be reminded again and again, like, Many of you have created vision boards before. You want to see again and again. Ah, that's that's the guiding, that's the guiding word for me this year. That's the reminder of who I want to be and who I am in truth. And as you embody this word, as you become more fully this quality or this new name, you, you your confidence will shine forth. The expression of this beingness will come clearer for others and they will benefit from it as well. So it is a service really to, to the world around you to really take your white stone and let it be something that you use throughout the year. Did you know that your life is unprecedented? There's no life like yours. And so will you share it then to establish this new normal? Because we need everybody, every unique life, every unique soul to really make the shift that I think a lot of us are feeling is happening now. A lot of energies are present to aid in that shift into the kind of visionary world and life that we all talk about and see and affirm. And so I invite you to affirm this truth, this knowing, this sharing of your unprecedented life to establish this new normal and and to use your new quality or new name at the end of the affirmation. So let's say this together. I share my unprecedented life to help establish a bright new normal on earth. I am... Blessings to you.